Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, the webinar here. Uh, this is Managed Vulnerability Management Service, uh, or AKA Defending from the Front. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Stephen Feist. I'm the uh, Vulnerability and Risk Management Specialist here at Satisnet. We're now a gamma company. Um, we're going to go through this webinar really, really briefly. Uh, there's a few slides that we need to show you and a demonstration to kind of deliver the, uh, the message that we want to go over to you today. If you have any questions at all during the, the course of this webinar, do feel free to drop them either in the Q&A or the chat, depending on what your, uh, your view looks like, and we'll get to those at the end of the session, or if they are urgent, we'll answer them as we're going through. Um, I'll try not to do death by PowerPoint today, um, but we'll move through a brisk pace. So. Let's move on. Uh, the first thing we do have obviously is the agenda. We're going to talk about a few things around how vulnerability management itself in a traditional format is kind of failing at the moment. It's not letting people get work done efficiently. And one of those solutions is automation um, for a variety of different things. Uh, so how and why should you be using those? Uh, we're also going to look at something called CTEM, which is a, a continuous threat exposure management piece of technology, which uh, Satisnet and uh, one of our partner companies is developing. Um, we're going to talk about the full lifecycle management and how you can uh, prioritize certain risks uh, and create dashboards and reports for those as well. And then obviously move on to the demonstration there for CTEM itself and talk about the managed service that we can offer alongside just a simple product there as well. So one of the main problems uh, that we find with uh, a huge amount of vulnerabilities and a huge amount of our customers at the moment is that a lot of unpatched vulnerabilities out there um, and misconfigurations are primarily responsible for almost all data breaches out there. When you think about um, a huge amount of uh, sort of the Verizon data breach report and various other things as well, almost all of those come from misconfigurations and vulnerabilities. It's 60% at the moment. That number is actually rising year on year as well. So unpatched vulnerabilities are your main problem out there. And when you're talking about traditional vulnerability management, where you're talking about uh, daily scanning, weekly scanning, monthly scanning, whatever it's going to be, you're looking at a huge amount of data that you're looking to ingest into various other pieces of tools. And they can come from a variety of different sources, whether you're talking about your tenables, your um, Microsoft Defenders and various other things as well. Um, and then having to collate all that information into one single place uh, to investigate and then hopefully remediate those if you are able to do so uh, is resource intensive, time consuming, and it's what they call now the old school method. It's not the best way to achieve those things. Moving forward, um, you have to think about how you're getting that data in. So there's a huge amount of silos of data where you can get that, this information from. In the top left of this uh, diagram here, hopefully this is readable on the screen, you've got your infrastructure scanners, obviously your NESs, your tenable IOs, but other things like um, asset management tools such as ServiceNow, CMDBs and various other things as well. Web security uh, for web app scanning and various other things as well. There's a whole host of different data sources that you can use and I can pretty much guarantee that anyone on this call has at least one or two of these where they sit there and go this data is vast we don't know how to we can parse this we don't know what we can do you end up sticking it into either excel spreadsheets or databases if you're lucky enough you might get it into a power bi spreadsheet to kind of normalize something to get some sort of view into it and then everything gets stuck in a ticking system and work through normally it's a slow method of doing things and you want to be able to automate this uh, kind of functionality as much as possible obviously you can automate the scanning very, very easily, but the actual the workflow to come out of there is very, very difficult. And even then, you're still stuck with the case of, well, how do I prioritize things? Where do I actually need to go to go from point A, where I've got these, you know, in this example here, 271,000 vulnerabilities, down to a point where I'm looking at the 81 key vulnerabilities, which might be a, a severe problem for my uh, organization. And they can come down to weaponized vulnerabilities where there might be an exploit. Um, those exploits, which are then the RCE, the remote code execution, and the privilege escalation as well, they're the ones which are the, the key ones at the moment. Anything which is then further tied into ransomware, which might be actively attacking you, you know, tie that into other things like phishing attacks and various other things which almost all companies nowadays are being subjected to on a daily or weekly basis and then down to your trending active exploits so things that are being attacked in the wild and may be affecting your organization today so taking that prioritization then you need to have a tool something like ctem or continuous threat exposure management so rather than having lots of different legacy tools where you're looking at uh, you know, your daily scanning, your weekly scanning, and then pumping it all down into Power BI or somewhere like that, if you're lucky enough to have a Power BI expert, CTEM can take all that for you and just feed that data in. You then start prioritization from there and you say, well, these are the things which need, we need to prioritize because they're a high risk to our systems, and then we can fix those vulnerabilities really, really quickly. 
So on this side, it's called RBVM. That's the old name for it. It's now called CTEM. And in this case here, you're looking at a, a proper workflow of ingesting the data from the left hand side because you're doing your, your continuous scanning, your continuous uh, threat detection and analysis on that left hand side there from all of your different infrastructure tools from, uh, you know, your static code scanners and various other things as well, pumping those in. Uh, tying that into an asset database that you might already have, which might be a CMDB, it might be a list from Active Directory, it could be various other different things. Creating that reporting and notification workflow automatically so that you don't have to sit there and go, well, we need to create a ticket. Who's responsible for that asset? Let's go look it up in the CMDB. Are oh, that asset is out of date and so on and so forth. You know, there's a whole different uh, list of problems that a lot of organizations face from day to day. You then move that into the advanced automation remediation section in the bottom right, um, which uh, covers your automated patching, ticketing and various other things as well. So you can start to not have to worry about that sort of uh, problem anymore. Obviously, you don't have to automate the patching. You can you can still have it to go click to go and so on and so forth. So that if you have to worry about kind of change management systems and various other things as well, you can do so. But once it's, you, know, you can tie it into your ticketing system and say once it's been approved in ServiceNow or um, uh, Chairwell or whatever your ticketing system is, read from the API, get that information, go through, then automate the patching, close the ticket, uh, notify the, the service owners and so on and so forth. There's a whole list of different things you can do within there as well. And then you start that cycle. You start the cycle again with the, the scanning, remediation and so on and so forth. You can then um, start tying this into a chasm system as well, cyber attack, cyber asset attack surface management. So you can start to look at your uh, overall risk profile um, and uh, analyze exactly where you need to focus any extra effort outside of CTEM. So in this case here, you've got a full lifecycle management in there, so you can look at deploying new scanners, you can look at um, any updates or uh, other um, management for those hosts that need to be there. Uh, that's obviously all included within CTEM. Uh, and then pulling in the the scans that you already got from CTEM as well uh, into other tools if need be for, you know, for, you can still tie it into things like Power BI for different dashboards if you need to. Obviously, it's better to have the dashboards which are in CTEM already to make sure that you can do that and then prioritize any results that you need to fix. So you only fix what you need to. Um, there's a whole, uh, there's a conversation around, um, you know, everything's critical at the moment. 70% uh, of vulnerabilities are either critical or high as they get released on day one. If everything is critical, why is it critical? Where, where do you need to actually focus your your um, uh, your attention to? So taking that to the next level, then um, you've got the whole uh, automation and workflows on the back end of CTEM to be able to go and uh, analyze the risk, notify the business owners and the service owners, and then get your proper cyber risk exposure management lower, um, so that you are uh, working more effectively and more uh, resource less intensively, if that makes sense. Um, you can also tie in and update CMDBs and so on and so forth. So if you have a host where uh, it needs to move to a different network and things, you can update the CMDB to make sure that that's working, um, updating ownership uh, registries and so on and so forth, because CTEM can act as that man in the middle and then pulling information from Active Directory and from your, your actual asset register and things. If an owner updates on one system, it can update on all of them via CTEM. So alongside that, we can also supply this as a managed service as well. Um, so we can give you that consolidated view of all of your vulnerabilities across your entire estate. We're talking on-premise cloud, web apps, and so on and so forth. There's a whole host of different estates out there now that everyone has to uh, to manage and be aware of in terms of risk. Uh, and that's not including things like shadow IT as well, which is a, another problem entirely. Um, but if you can keep a catalogued um, analysis of all of these tools and all of these risks that you might have, then it helps you uh, support the business well and it helps you uh, drive that, uh, the cost of ownership of everything down as well because everything will be supported and so on and so forth. We can support a whole host of different third party scanning tools as well. I've put on the uh, the screen there for the DAST and SAS tools, but this could be anything for infrastructure scanning, uh, infrastructure analysis and so on and so forth, cloud analysis and various other things as well. So it gives you that real time asset inventory so you can dive in, look at what assets you've physically got on your estate, whether it is on premise in the cloud or uh, your web apps and so on and so forth, and then map those assets to stakeholders and then you can give real time risk analysis to those people as well. So at this point, we're going to dive over to a demo. So just bear with me one second while I share a different screen. Should be good. Uh, so let's just stop sharing and then share this one here. So I'm already logged into CTEM here. Hopefully this is all uh, displaying okay for everyone. 
Um, and in this case here, we are looking at the main dashboard. Now, this is just a demo instance uh, which is running. Um, uh, it's just got some information coming in from a couple of different vulnerability management tools, uh, uh, including Tenable, Microsoft TVM, and a couple of other things as well. And in this case here, we've got um, a, a risk dashboard which gives us our tenancy score. So it gives us a kind of an asset exposure score and a cyber exposure risk score profiled against the devices which are out there. That can go up or down based on the number of devices, the number of vulnerabilities and how well you're doing against remediation profiles as well. Uh, you can also see the trend as it goes up and down through, uh, you know, more scan ingestions, more uh, patches being pushed out and so on and so forth. A class uh, up here for total high risk, and in this case here, you can you can call on it's basically anything with a critical or high severity vulnerability. You can tailor that if you want to to just include things like um, exploitable vulnerabilities in a certain network range and so on and so forth. And there's a whole profile up here where you can go and filter and change how this actually looks. So I can just go and look at things like, well, let's just go and look at things which are Cisco, for example, and I can apply those filters and it will change the dashboard at the bottom. Or I can say, well, only show me things from TVM, for example, or only show me things from TVM and uh, Devendor, and then apply those filters and it will change the dashboard down the bottom there. Uh, so in this case, it doesn't change too much because we've only got a few sources. But if you've got a multitude of sources from you know, all your cloud apps, all your uh, your web apps that you might be scanning, your static and dynamic code analysis tools and various other things as well, you can start to see how very quickly this main uh, kind of posture dashboard will change your analysis of your, your views there. So let me just clear these filters up here. So we've got the, the full data set and then apply. So back to the main dashboard there. There we go. Uh, you can see all your top vulnerable devices, and these are all clickable, so you can go through and see the actual dashboards, uh, sorry, the elements underneath that, uh, and get all that information as well. There's a whole host of different information which comes in here as well, including, there we go, your, your, this is your chasm piece, your cyber attack, sorry, cyber asset attack surface management, I'll say that right one day, which shows you all of your assets in, in this case. Now, again, you can filter this down, you can say, well, in this case, I'm looking at everything from Tenable, Microsoft TVM and Home Security. I can turn off one of those and it turns off that device entirely from that particular view. Uh, if I turn off TVM and Tenable, for example, it only shows me the devices which are coming in from Home Security. Just a few examples there. Again, if you've got 15 tools coming into this, it's very quick to see how well you're doing against discovery, remediation and so on and so forth. You can also obviously click on the assets as well, which are populated within this dashboard. And in here, I can see the total number of vulnerabilities, the total number of patches which are outstanding. This is an outstanding number of patches. Uh, what workflows will come to workflows in a second are assigned to this device, so you can see how automation goes for this. Uh, and also the severity spread. Now, in this case, there's no critical vulnerabilities on this one, but there are some highs, so we might look at those in a few moments. And also the geolocation, you can get that from your IP location, or you can actually populate this yourself from a, a CMDB or another asset database that you might have. And obviously you can see various other pieces of information which are kind of static and uh, uh, normal for that particular type of device. So you can see whereabouts it is and so on and so forth. And as you scroll down, you get far more information around these devices, including the vulnerabilities. You can see a graph view of how that's actually built out. Uh, I don't play with this too much down here myself. Um, uh, normally when I look at a device in here, there's thousands of vulnerabilities, so it might be a little bit more difficult, but you can start saying, well, let's just turn off the information and it changes the graph and it gives you a little bit more information there. And you can do things in here, like we can add in certain uh, views, like just show me the exploitable vulnerabilities as we were saying earlier, so they can be quite handy for you. But if we click on any one of these vulnerabilities, for example, it shows me all the vulnerability information. Now this can be normalized and it can be shown to you in, in various different ways. Uh, where you've got this in at the moment, it's just raw JSON, so it's, it's fairly, uh, fairly standard. Um, and that's just a simple device. There's, there's lots of different information you can get from there. And obviously if you've got multiple sources of information for each of these devices, then you'll get more information available to you in this panel, all collated into one view. The next one is your risk map manager. Now we mentioned about workflows before, you can also build something called a risk map as well, which is a way of uh, kind of cataloging similar devices. It's kind of, uh, it's almost like an asset management system in this case here. So I've got an asset uh, management system down here, which is workstation devices risk map in UK. So it's everything with a, a geolocation of UK uh, and uh, which are classed as workstation devices. I could have that as server devices, I could have that as uh, switches or whatever it might be. It's just a way of, of simply build it up and you can add your own um, if I remember correctly, you go back to the main risk maps page. Uh, you can add your own. Uh, it's on the back end that you'd have to do that. Uh, or you can go into the risk maps expressions and you can add them in here if you want to. And this is kind of how they're built up. Just simple tags in this case. It's kind of a, um, uh, a SQL or a SPL like language where you can kind of tag things together there. So I can add one in the bottom right, for example. Uh, oh, that 
didn't load. There we go. Uh, and you can build up the tags and you can build the name and the expression and so on and so forth. And then that can be available to whoever you like within the system. So if you have someone who needs to look at, for example, Windows servers in your US uh, office um, and with criticals and highs only, then you can build that risk map up there and you can share that with them so they have their own viewpoint when they log in, which is quite nice. Um, and in this case here, you can see all those. So there's a critical high severity risk map expression. I go back to the instances, I can see that, and I can see all those devices in there. So it's just a way of simply filtering things so you can get a view straight down to uh, different viewpoints, whether it's your PCI stuff, whether it's all your cloud stuff, whether it's whatever it needs to be, you can do so. The next one is your workflow manager. I mentioned workflows earlier. And in this case here, this is a way of taking uh, any data that comes into CTEM and then uh, creating a workflow based off of that. You can call it runbooks, you can call it whatever you like in this case. It's your automation uh, kind of hub, if you like, and saying if X happens, go and do Y, Z, and so on and so forth. So you can create those if you need to, and you can apply those to different users as well. So if I come down here, I can say, well, uh, we can create a workflow name for all Cisco stuff uh, under there. We can apply that to, say, Gemma, for example, because Gemma's got that job. Uh, oops, I didn't give it a name. Let's go Cisco all. Oops and then click create and then that goes and creates that workflow and then you can tag on certain elements of different workflows on the back of that to make sure that automation gets happening for for lots of different things you can apply that to risk maps as well so you can not just looking at individuals with certain tags you can look at lots of different things in that, that scenario there Obviously, we mentioned people. In this case, you can tie this into uh, multiple different ways of getting stakeholder information in, whether again, it's your CMDB, whether it's Active Directory uh, from certain groups and so on and so forth. You can upload a CSV if you want to. There's an entirely different way of doing it. Or you can just manually add people in and tie them into certain different things for email addresses and so on and so forth. Lots of different ways to do that kind of thing. You can say when reports should be delivered to them and so on and so forth. You can uh, do all sorts of different things within here. It's a very uh, robust kind of um, stakeholder manager system on the back end to make sure that you can do that you can also see your own information as well but i don't have anything in there because i'm a demo user at this point uh, i'll briefly skip over this one this is the pdr side of things so you can hook this into uh, the other tool which um, the company provides which is uh, data helix pdr the phishing detection and response tool so if you are looking at doing any kind of phishing stuff you can automatically pull that information in through as well and have that as a different risk profile within there if you need to uh, interesting i can't see all of the cases there Apologies, I should be able to see these. Um, there is an instant case management system on here, so you don't have to use an external ticketing system, or if you don't particularly have one, you can do it in here if you need to. And again, it's got all the features uh, with regards to, uh, you know, creating your tickets, um, assigning them to people, individuals or groups, and then making sure that the workflow happens off the back of that. So you can tie that into, um, ah, I've just been told it's permissions related. Um, I should have it, but I don't. Uh, but you can see all of the, uh, you know, all your incidents which happen uh, on the back end of the system and the front end, and who can um, authorize certain things as well. The next section here is your, your AI analysis engine in this case. So there's lots of different reports which are built on the back of this. Uh, so in some of these cases, you can see how these reports are built up. In this case here, you can basically say, well, go and show me all the top threat actors everything which is being attacked readily in the wild. We get that from threat intelligence sources, which are all some already available within here. Things like um, MISP and various other uh, recorded future, I think is one as well. Lots of different threat intelligence sources you can integrate. So if you've got your own threat intelligence source, which you already pay for, this can be integrated in here by the API, which it probably has as well. So you can do that too. You can then see where things are being attacked by geolocation. So you can see, well, North America is you know, potentially under a, attack from cyber uh, risks and so on and so forth. Generate that report, go and send it off to the people that need to care about it based on risk maps and workflows and various other things as well. Uh, this is your, uh, your control center for all of the um, alert signatures and the categories uh, and everything else which is being actively attacked in the wild at the moment. Now, in this case here, these aren't all the, the active effects or sorry, active attacks which are uh, shown for all customers this is just the ones we've got enabled on here there's there's lots of different ones you can have but in this case here if you want to look up uh, you know channels or check-in and so on and so forth you can look at that and it gives you more information so if it notices uh, any kind of ransomware which is being used or can be used against your particular vulnerabilities which you have in your system these will be highlighted in that particular vulnerability information on the uh, the main dashboard or the second the asset management dashboard as well and you'll start to get that whole thing collated together so you can start to see that 
you'll also start to see things like what top DNS names are being communicated with from your system or to your systems and so on and so forth. There's lots of different ways you can uh, kind of gather that information all together. So you're not just looking at raw vulnerability data anymore. You're now looking at attack paths and various other things as well. Obviously, you can get some reports in there as well. This is just your, your basic report system here. Um, this gives you a list of uh, what reports are being run by which people. So you can keep a, a back end system log of which reports are being run on a regular basis. If there's any problems with those reports and so on and so forth, you can come in and edit them. Uh, and it's very simple to create reports within here. You literally build up a dashboard, filter it down to what you need to report for, and you can export that and schedule it whenever you like to as well. So it could be you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It could be uh, day before patching, day after patching and so on and so forth. So you can get a compare and contrast. I personally uh, just stick to the dashboards because it's just the easiest way to do things. And then obviously you've got the back end system settings. I won't talk about those too much. But the main profile that you need to be looking at here is the, the front end vulnerability risk dashboard. So you can kind of uh, tailor how your risk management system looks uh, externally to, to everyone who's using it. You can tailor this per user as well. So every user can have a different viewpoint as they log in. And then obviously your cyber attack, sorry, cyber asset attack surface management. I haven't said it a single time correct yet. Uh, and obviously you can look at the asset view or the raw vulnerability view if you want to see where particular vulnerabilities are the most effective or most prevalent in your systems and then tailor that down if you need to. And then your risk map manager, which then says, well, let's go and look at our particular uh, our risk instances and see where we need to focus. So very quickly, you can start to see that you're not just looking at one single uh, kind of um, dashboard at all times. You have multiple different dashboards which can give you multiple different viewpoints into uh, the data that you should be caring about. Right, that's CTM in a nutshell. If you do have questions again, pop them in the chat. More than happy to discuss this if need be or give you a one-on-one -on -one demo if need be as well. I will uh, go back to sharing the presentation. Okay. So after that, we have uh, a managed service which is uh, kind of attached to uh, this. You don't have to purchase this if you don't want to, but it is something which is free, uh, is available and we can quote you on this based on your requirements. So we have multiple different customer types in, uh, in terms of um, cybersecurity. Those that require just ad hoc virtual, uh, vulnerability management and as a managed service. So that could be something where you need you know, a monthly report or something or um, you know, a monthly uh, kind of service review, if you like, to get that kind of up-to-date information and risk analysis based on there, or you can do eight by five as a standard weekly basis, uh, um, you know, office hours basis, or everything up to 24, seven, 365. So if you have a different requirement for your business based on what we think you may have, we can certainly tailor something to, to meet what you need. We've got a fully UK based service offering as well, although we can, uh, if need be, offer 24, seven, as we said before. So it doesn't just have to be office hours. There's lots of different options for, for kind of how we can support you on there. The tooling that we've shown you as well is also hosted globally. It's available in various different cloud platforms, uh, AWS and Azure. We will have a conversation with you uh, if you go forward with this to say, where would you like it to be housed? Obviously, we have data, data warehousing in your chosen geolocation as well for various different compliance reasons. I so shouldn't need to explain that. Uh, but if you need it to be hosted in the US, for example, we can do so or in Germany or wherever it needs to be. Uh, so obviously UK GDPR. The whole point of this is not to just sell your service and walk away. This is to uh, act as an extension of your team to help you move forward. You don't just want to um, sell your product, sell your service, and then just say, hey, this is your problem now. We want to make sure that any of those risks that we're already talking about are handled correctly uh, and make sure that you are mitigating those risks as best as possible as well. Alongside all that, of course, we've got proactive configuration, monitoring, performance, capacity management for the service as well. So we make sure that that's all logged and, and monitored on a 24 by 7 basis. Um, that's not just for yourselves, it's for every customer that we have for this. Um, obviously, if the service goes down, then you lose access to it and then we don't uh, we don't have a service we can offer you. So to make sure that this is uh, live, we have, a, I think it's five sigma at the moment, uh, hoping to go six sigma soon with uh, in terms of uptime um, to make sure that it's all available for everyone. And of course, alongside that, access to standard support process, uh, any technical skills that you may be missing internally as well, we can help you supply that. We don't just do vulnerability management as a as a business. We do lots of different things as well. Um, speak to us and we can certainly help you uh, generate those um, extra skills internally or supply those as a consultancy process or part of the vulnerability management service as well. 
And the final thing there that we do mention is vendor relationships as well. So if you need to be able to speak to, um, you know, if you're a tenable customer, for example, we can help you alongside that and we can start brokering those relationships to help you improve um, whatever problems you may be having there in terms of, you know, whether it's support or whether it's licensing or whatever it might be, we can come along and we can help that because we have those relationships already in place. There we go. Uh, additionally, obviously, there's a multitude of different devices that you can uh, detect within CTM and all your other tools as well. Um, and it's not just dependent on the tools that you already have. We can supply you different tools um, to enable you to, you know, detect things in your cloud if you need to, um, or uh, for identity management services and various other things as well. If you have something which isn't listed on here, do let us know. We can probably find you a tool which fits in this. Whether it has an API or not, we can certainly, you know, integrate those as well. In addition to that, obviously, we've already mentioned things like instant management, and instant resolution and closure. They're a key service within the vulnerability management service that we do offer because there's no point just raising tickets and then just letting them languish. We want to make sure that they are tracked all the way from uh, through that incident lifecycle to make sure that you guys are uh, happy on the back end there. Uh, we will, of course, do um, service reviews all the way through your, your life cycle as well of the platform um, to make sure that whether it's you know a monthly um, meet, meeting to catch up with everything that's been going on, make sure that you guys are aware of who we are, make sure that everyone's talking together correctly as well. Obviously, software support and configuration management for the platform as well is a standard and it is a given. Um, and you will get that regardless of which level of service you go for with us. Off the back of that, we do offer three standard service tiers. Um, if you need something outside of this, obviously we can have conversations or we can build an ad hoc service for you. The most typical one that we do um, uh, for most small customers at the moment is the on-demand service. So you get scan reviews quarterly at the moment. Um, we can increase that to monthly if need be, but that would tend to go to an eight by five service. Um, you know, you get various different things alongside there. Each of these have um, various different cost models associated with them, so we can meet whatever budget you have um, as required, uh, and we can certainly have conversations around that. So if you do want to start talking to anyone in um, the vulnerability managed service team or the sales team, let us know either in the chat, or the Q&A or whatever it might be, and we can certainly help you have that conversation. Um, and again, we have multiple people in terms of project management, um, in terms of sales and, so, and account management, and obviously the technical side as well, to be able to help you deliver this service effectively. So we'll leave it there for the moment. If you have any questions, do let us know. Um, we'll, I'll just pop myself on mute for a second. We'll have a quick drink um, and then we'll come to the Q&A in just a second. So the first question I've been asked, uh, let me just drink this over. Uh, oops. First question I've been asked is what tools can we have from a vulnerability perspective? Um, the, the simple answer is almost anything. Um, if they have an API, that's the easiest way to integrate those tools there. Um, if they don't, but they have data exports, we can certainly integrate those. Anything which does an API or does data exports in kind of CSV format or something like that, there's normalization on the back end of that, which we can obviously uh, leverage into. If it doesn't have normalized data at the back of it, we can certainly look at a way of normalizing that data, getting it into C10 to make sure that it is going to work as well. Uh, again, if you have a tool which hasn't been mentioned on one of the previous slides, let me just go back to uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, this one here is fine. Uh, so any of these um, slides that you see here, for example, the um, you know, tenable IO, Taniums and various other things, they're fairly easy. They already integrated and already work fine. But if you have something outside of these, do let us know and we'll have that conversation with you for uh, the purposes of uh, getting that data in. Um, can C10 be hosted in a different cloud? Yes, it can. Obviously, we support AWS um, and Azure as well at the moment. If you have like a private cloud or something, we can probably support that. It depends on you know, various requirements. Again, let us know. We'll have a further discussion with you. We can certainly analyze that. We can do that on a case by case basis as well. Uh, can you provide us with a scanning tool as part of the package? So if you don't already have one and you need to kind of get started uh, and you don't have one uh, already, yes, we have those relationships with vendors already. We can supply that for you. Uh, and if you buy it as part of the managed service, it may even be a little bit cheaper. Don't quote me on that. Um, you'll, you, we can always have a conversation with you with regards to um, uh, the sales process for that. That's not a problem. Uh, how does the vulnerability scoring work? OK. Um, so CTEM takes into uh, account various different aspects there. So the default um, 
the default scoring comes from the tools that you have yourselves. So if you have something like a Tenable or Rapid7 or something like that, they already have cyber scores uh, associated with them, whether it's VPR from Tenable or the, uh, I think it's just the vulnerability scoring metric from uh, Rapid7, for example, and it normalizes those uh, against threat intelligence data as well to make sure that it is uh, the latest data as well. So it aggregates that score across the whole tooling. Uh, if you need more information around that, I have uh, there's some PDFs available that I can send over to people if they need to see how that scoring system physically works. Right, I don't have any other questions at the moment, I don't think. Um, oh no, there is. Oh, that's fine. It's just uh, a few other bits and pieces that's fine okay um so if there are any further questions do pop them in the chat briefly we'll we'll leave this um session open for just a few moments there uh let me just go back to the end slide so we can see there we go um and we're happy to answer those questions one-on-one -on -one if need be so if you do need to have a quick conversation with either ourselves as a technical person um or from a sales aspect as well we can uh, whoever booked you on the call today will be able to handle those questions as well but we're happy to answer any of those questions as we need to